why is this happening and why was this never happening before? And is this, um, is this a side effect of openness and tolerance where because we're, you know, more open minded towards people that are trans or drag queens or what have you in that there's going to be like some outer l limits of this push, you know, like what? So you've seen that, right? Yeah, like, yeah, I've seen it. I, I think it's it's always interesting because like lives of t it's easy to like cherry pick one or two things and like you said there's many instances of this and i've seen them and i don't understand like bringing your child to something like this i i don't know how like common that is or mm. if it's a cherry picked instance that now gets picked up by everybody as kind of chum and passed around and it's something that happened once and now it seems like oh everyone's doing this and well, it's not everyone, but the thing about the internet is there's so many instances. There's so many of them, and then people see those instances and they duplicate it, which is it right. becomes acceptable. Right. So I guess the like pushback I've heard from my whole question is like, how did Drag Queen's Story Hour? Let's just talk about Story Hour become right. a thing. When did, what, what do you mean by that? Like, drag Queen Story Hour. So it's drag queens reading stories to yeah, children. Yeah, and the pushback is. History 2015 in San Francisco. Drag Queen Story Hour started in 2015 in San Francisco. Was created by Michelle T. 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 E. A. Um, then the executive director of the nonprofit Radar Productions. Nonprofit. L. O. L. The first events were organized by Julian Delgado Lopera of the Virgi Tovar and Virgi Tovar. T, who identifies as queer, came up with the idea after attending children's library events with her newborn son and finding them welcoming but heteronormative. <laughs> okay. She imagined an event that was more inclusive and affirming to the LBGTQ families. Okay. First event was held at the Eureka Valley Harvey Milk uh, Memorial Branch Library, LBGT Castro neighborhood of San Francisco, and featured drag queen Persia as well and was well received by that community, I guess. And other DSH events in San Francisco featured several drag queens of color, including Honey Mahogany, <laughs> Eve Saint Croissant, and mm -hmm. uh, Panda Dolce. As of February 2020, there are 50 plus official chapters of DSH spread internationally, as well as other drag artists holding events at libraries, schools, bookstores, and museums. October 2022, a nonprofit organization officially changed its name to Drag Story Hour to be more inclusive and reflect <laughs> the diverse cast they of storytellers. A queen. Yeah, queen. You can't say just queen. Well, so. I'm a drag king. I know. I think even Sarah Silverman did like a whole video about this, but she was saying, what's the difference between like a drag queen and a clown reading to your kids? And. I mean, clowns are fucking creepy. They're fucking creepy. <laughs> yeah, those are weird so too. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually maybe more inclined to be creeped out by a clown than a drag queen. Depends, you know. <laughs> it depends on what's going on at the show. If it's just a but person is dressed up like a woman who wants to read things. So I think this is where two things are getting combined as one. Drag queen story hour is like you go to a library and there's a drag queen reading a story to your kid. Right. Um, the drag queen shows that we're seeing kids taken to, right. I don't know what that is. Well, I think that's what comes out of drag queen story hour when people take it to the next level. Okay. I think that's what people <laughs> are concerned with. I mean, like drag queen story slope? hour. Yeah. Drag queen story hour. Someone's dressed like a woman and, and reading the, who cares? Like, what's the big deal? Yeah. I mean, I, I understand the intent behind starting that. You yeah, know? for sure. If you're, if you're a part of an LBGT family and you know, your, your kids are only used to seeing a traditional father mother relationship and you know they have two moms or they have two dads yeah that's that could be fucking weird and this would be like a nice little thing to make them feel comforted right that like it makes them feel part like there's other communities other than these traditional you know communities that have been depicted in the media for decades and decades right yeah makes sense but i mean i guess this is the this is the conservative kind of slippery slope mm -hmm. argument for yeah. like gay marriage is oh when you start normalizing things like drag queen story hour then you have drag queen strip club hour for the kids and now you have you know degeneracy and yeah but that's a, the, 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 that argument against gay marriage is preposterous it doesn't make any sense 
because what percentage of people that are involved in a gay marriage with in, in, or adopted or surrogate children that come along with that are involved in these things? It's probably a tiny amount. But the problem with something like libs of TikTok, or the, not even the problem with them, but the problem with the internet in general, is that you have literally billions of people. Mm -hmm. And out of those people, hundreds of billions of posting things. And out of those hundreds of millions, you're going to get thousands of things that some people are going to find questionable. But what percentage of that exists in your community? Very, very few. But the problem is when you broadcast that and then put it online, then it sort of becomes a thing that exists out there in, you know, the 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 zeitgeist. Right, but who's actually putting it in the zeitgeist? Right. The person who's broadcasting it, there's a person who's putting it out there the first time, but what really gets it in the zeitgeist is when you use it as a flashpoint for the culture wars. Right. So suddenly now all of conservative media has a video and it's like chum in the water. So you're just feeding, and both sides do this. You know, you can t cherry pick some right wing chud and be like this is representative of all the right wing chuds and mm -hmm. and sure i feel like this is the downfall why things like your podcast and podcasts in general are good because you actually get to tease apart some of these things instead yeah. of it just being like this is representative of every liberal that you know <laughs> right yeah that's preposterous it's people having an objective assessment of what's really going on is is very important